John Fetcher here with mobilehomeinvesting.net. In this video, I want to talk to you about the relationship um, between fixing your homes up or leaving them as handyman specials uh, and then selling them as cash or payments. What that means to you, uh, the price points that you can expect. I don't want you to be surprised um, or have these you know, questions when it comes to think of, you know, do I fix my home up? Do I sell it as is? Do I sell it on cash? Do I sell it for payments? I don't want to lose money. I don't want to leave money on the table. I want to sell it quickly. So we're going to kind of talk about all that because things, uh, sometimes, especially with mobile homes, uh, are not always what they appear to be. And <laughs> I have some experience with mobile home investing, and that's what I want to talk to you about. Um, and first, before we kind of go into the, you know, should we fix the home, let's kind of get an example of it. So let's walk through this, uh, actually a really decent uh, 1994 uh, three-bedroom, two-bath that we just moved into the park. Pick this up for free. I do a different video of how you can attract uh, add more homes to your park. Now, this is a cool layout for a mobile home. I've never seen this layout before. Uh, Stand-up tub in the middle. There's nothing surrounding it besides the floor. Minor soft spot here, uh, which is going to be fixed very simply. Uh, cut back to this point, a square, replace. Right here, this looks a lot worse than it is. We're going to pull up this uh, paper, and then this is all safe and secure. Uh, plumbing is good, except for the knobs right here. Uh, his and her walk-in Oh, not sure what you can see. There we go. His and her walk-in closets. Very nice. This one has a uh, the water heater there, which looks pretty new. Uh, behind the toilet is the other soft spot, which you want to check. Uh, it's not surprising. Water can damage home. It's the number one enemy of a home. Uh, right here, you can tell water gets in over time. Not that much. I think you can see a little space of light. I know I can coming through. You see that on the video? There's a little space of light right there. Anyway, so water, the mobile homes are not uh, watertight all the time. Uh, it'd be nice if they were, and we try to make sure that they are uh, by doing preventative maintenance. However, uh, as you can tell, water has come into the home. Carpet is needed. The kitchen vinyl is actually pretty good. Back here, uh, floor needs to be, if you take a look, but this floor needs to be pulled back a little further because you can see the ground and then this new plywood needs to be extended a bit more uh, to obviously wear the somewhere around here and then that looks pretty good the washer and dryers would be back here that's just junk drywall that I'm standing on okay uh, appliances are here they look adequate uh, the kitchen looks good carpet uh, needs to be installed uh, this bedroom looks good. Very, very decent size. You want to check all the corners in all the homes. I have already walked through the home uh, to check for all the soft spots. Before I purchased, I verified that the hot water heater worked, that the uh, other, electric, that the other um, outlets worked, that the appliances worked. And then you have the last room here of the three. Again, great size. Uh, hole in the floor, ripped up, but surrounding it... So that's really the question here. Is the whole floor messed up or is it just the main area that we're looking at? Because surrounding the floor is very solid. You know, I'm not falling in. There's no risk of falling in. So what that means is it's just a contained issue and that's perfectly acceptable. Um, windows look good. Obviously, drywall needs to be added. Drywall needs to be sanded. And then the home could be painted. This bathroom, this bathroom looks very good. A little dirty, but good. So that's the so that's the, that's that's the home. Now, uh, could you sell this as is? Absolutely. Could you fix it up and sell it again? And would people objectively think that the home looks better fixed up? Of course, absolutely. What does that do to your bottom line, though? I want to cut to another video right now um, where we're talking just about that. And what I want to do with this video is uh, the person listening to my voice, assuming that you're an investor, I want to let you know, or even an end user who's trying to sell their property, I want you to understand you know, what repairs you ideally want to do depending on how you want to sell it and then what that looks like uh, not only in the speed of the sale but in the total profit that you're going to get on the deal uh, because every dime that you put into a mobile home to repair it you have to get that dime right back out before you make profit and really understanding your buyers uh, is huge understanding what they want to buy how much capital they have if they're bank approved what they want to pay monthly or down or rent so we're going to talk about a lot of that on this video actually a lot of this video is not talking about um, 
you know, sellers, ment uh, buyers mentalities or sellers mentalities. We're really talking about the relationship uh, between the repairs you do, how much money you put into a home versus getting it back out uh, and sort of that high level overview. So if I haven't lost you already, um, let me first say that if you are a frantic seller who's trying to like sell their property uh, and you're pulling out your hair and you don't want to be there any longer this video really isn't for you but do email me or watch the video but email me at support at mobilehomeinvesting.net I'd be happy to give you any pointers ask you some questions and also maybe put you in touch with anyone that might be investing or purchasing mobile homes nearby so we're talking about mobile homes inside pre-existing parks and attached to private land let's first talk about this is kind of three well, three or four different parts here, but the first thing I want us to understand is how we can possibly sell a mobile home or fill it in the case of renting. Now, you could trade it for something, you could do something more creative, but the basic ones are bank financing. You can find a buyer that has bank financing. Uh, they're going to go through a bank. The bank has to approve the land, the mobile home itself, the age of the home, uh, the buyer, their, their credit, the down payment that they're putting, the foundation of the mobile home, the park if it's in a park. So bank uh, qualifi uh, qualifying is difficult, uh, restrictive somewhat, but it definitely exists. Big banks nationwide, small community um, credit unions will lend on mobile homes on land in parks. Uh, also, you can sell a mobile home for cash. If buyers uh, in your area have cash, now there are areas around the country where there are more cash buyers, coastal areas, hot spot areas that are metropolitan type of areas. Where people want to be, they will throw large amounts of money sometimes at average mobile homes. Now you go away from the coastal areas further inland, or you go away from the metropolitan areas, and you get to more areas where there's less cash buyers um, so cash buyers can be few and far between in a lot of areas, but in some areas they have money, uh, and a lot of them have money, and you know, $100,000 or more that they sold a home, now they're moving and they're going to be buying something new. But in most areas, having 10, 20, 30 grand cash to buy a used mobile home, uh, there's usually more sellers than there are cash buyers. Most traditional sellers, mobile home sellers, are looking for a cash buyer. Mobile homes in parks, they're looking for cash buyers and they're all kind of fighting and competing against the same finite amount of cash buyers looking to purchase a mobile home, a used mobile home. Cash buyers are again what they are. Uh, seller financing, make sure that you're following national and state procedures and laws. Uh, to stay compliant with seller held financing your buyers have the ability to repay and you can also rent a mobile home which you're not selling it but you are creating a value you are creating some profit um, let's talk about what these abbreviations up here mean total fix tf a total fix just so if we can get a baseline you know that is you are upgrading a property it's a total rehab even if it didn't need much you are totally improving it totally rehabbing it totally updating it um, this is nice. I mean, you're, you're over improving the property almost when you uh, totally fix it. Uh, basic fix, we're going to talk about here in a little bit. It encompasses uh, all of this stuff and a little bit more. And then as is, for this example, uh, let's say that as is is unlivable. But as is, you could buy a mobile home in great condition and sell it as is, and it's still in great condition. But it, for this example, it's going to be unlivable. In fact, I don't even want to say as is. I'm going to say just unlivable, UL. That's a much better distinction. UL, unlivable. So it needs work to get it to a livable condition. Uh, basic fixing, way past livable. Uh, we definitely want to, um, we don't want to upgrade anything, but we want to fix what's broken. And we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Obviously, you're going to be spending the most amount of money doing a total fix. You're not just doing structural stuff you're doing a lot of cosmetics, a lot of upgrading. So you're putting way more money in with the total fix, um, but you'll probably get top dollar. A basic fix uh, is the kind of the next step down, and then the bottom step is obviously unlivable. Uh, and these two separate themselves by a vast margin here uh, because the basic fixes are very livable. In fact, a lot of the case studies or the videos that you've seen on this channel as well, when we're talking about a home, we're usually talking about selling it at a basic fix. So what do those uh, fixes entail when I say a basic fix? Well, basic fixes including roof, make sure that the roof is free from leaks as well as the uh, ceiling is, a free from, uh, is free from active leaks. Those are fixed and corrected. 
the subfloor, there should be no soft spots, also no holes into the floor, uh, or you know, where you can see like the grass, the dirt below. That's obviously a no-no. <laughs> Fix all soft spots, no big holes in the walls. Uh, plumbing is correct and works. Electrical is correct and all works. The appliances are there. The uh, kitchen appliances, uh, not necessarily the washer and dryer. Uh, it's customary for the fridge and the stove to be there and to work. Also a dishwasher if a dishwasher is there. If there's no appliances, get used appliances and put them there. It's going to look better when you show the home instead of seeing the empty spaces there. Make sure that there's a heat source and that there's some sort of uh, AC cooling source. We'll leave this one blank for right now. Remove the junk, remove foul smells, remove animals and bugs, remove mold, and pressure wash the home. Keep in mind when you're going through these properties, many mobile homes won't need any or many or most or any of these. So keep in mind that we only do them if we have to do them. Uh, with that said, right here you'll notice uh, we're missing something, and that is carpet and paint. Most buyers, what we're doing with these repairs, we're fixing the things that most buyers will have a problem with. So the basic repair, basic fixes, are the issues that many buyers, when they're purchasing a home, they don't want to do. They don't want to deal with junk. They don't want to deal with foul smells. Now the carpet and paint, hold off on this one. This one is very optional. I'll give you an example. The home that we walked through, you'll notice that in the bedrooms there was carpet. Uh, well, in one of the bedrooms, in the master bedroom there wasn't. Uh, but in the others there were carpet. And in the living room, uh, I'm sorry, the uh, main living room area, there was no carpet. The carpet was removed and there was actually paint on the ground. And what that was is that was a primer sealing in the smell. There was a lot of uh, urine that was causing a smell. We had the carpet there. It soaked into the carpet and the pad from all the animals that were in the home before we got it. So we removed the carpet, we removed the pad, and we put a Kills, K-I-L-L-Z, primer down on the floor, and that's sealed in the smell. The smell's still there, but it's trapped underneath that primer layer. So we put the carpet, the uh, new carpet and pad back, but that's gonna be a one or two or $3,000 investment. Be aware that your new buyer, they may like doing that themselves. They may want to do that themselves. They might, may want to paint it the way they want to paint it or put in the floor covering they want to put in. And it's up to you. I mean, it's not your call to say to add 3000 to the end price. Maybe you could sell it in without fixing this. If you can leave it, if it's salvageable, keep it. So painting carpet is optional. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me about that. Uh, if you're in a larger area as well, uh, excuse me, a larger area over 100,000 people, there'll be more potential buyers. You'll have a larger pool of people wanting or being able to do some of the repairs to the mobile home. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you're in a population with a city under 100,000 people, and I mean even if it's nearby, if you're on the outskirts of a metropolitan area, you got plenty of people. But if you're completely in the middle of nowhere in a little tiny town, you're going to want to improve the home and most likely uh, do the carpet and paint. But I would encourage you, even in a small town, wait a week or two, put it on the market, have some people walk through and hear what they say. If everyone's complaining about this, then you may want to fix it. If you're in a bigger area, um, Use your best judgment on the paint and carpet, but, but potentially wait a week or two, just because this is a costly uh, issue that most people can handle themselves. Most people can't handle this themselves, the heat or AC that freaks them out, electrical freaks them out, subfloor stuff freaks them out. Obviously, all this smell and nastiness, that freaks out people. <laughs> they go in and then they come right back out. They don't even look in your home because there's bugs and, and funky types of smells. So. Um, now that we understand the repairs for the basic fixes, we understand what unlivable we is, what total fixing means, let's number these, and I'll tell you what the numbers mean after, but I want to plot the numbers on this graph to show you how they relate to what you can profit. So I'm going to number these in a specific way. may not make any uh, sense right now, but I do, but I promise I will tell you what these all mean. Okay, so hopefully you can see all that. And uh, let's talk about selling these. Oh, you know what? Actually, yeah, let me, let me tell you what these numbers mean first. So if you are going to put these homes out in most markets, priced accordingly with the terms correct, meaning the payments if you're going to sell payments, 
or the price, if you're going to sell for you know, whatever cash price or bank finance price or seller financed or rental price, it's in line with the market, so it's not completely out of whack. Assuming that all of these are in priced uh, competitively with the market, then you know, assuming that they're all equal like that, they will sell, from my experience, in this manner. First, and that's not really selling, so if you want to sell it, it would be, you know, this one would be first. But you're going to get the rent filled up first, seller finance filled up second. That's going to be, that's going to fill up really fast. Then you're going to, it's going to take a little bit longer, but you're going to get someone in this property right here with seller financing under basic fix. And it's no surprise, the beautiful homes, they're attractive to the total population. Anybody going into that home that ex knows what they're walking into is going to look around and I love it. This needs nothing. I want it. And then here, it needs a little bit more, so there's some people that might not want it, but then there's plenty that still do. So you're going to sell this one quick, then you'll probably sell this one, because if that's unlivable, it's only going to be sold to somebody that doesn't mind doing the work. They don't have to move in right away. They can do it on the weekends. They can fix it up, and then their family could move in. Not impossible to sell at all. In fact, you'll sell the cash one that's totally fixed uh, quick first, but then you should sell this one for fifth, sixth, seven, uh, seventh, total fixed. And I hope this makes sense. This is assuming that you're trying to sell, you, you have one property all on the market. This, you know, in each one of these categories, this is the relation that they should sell in. But let's talk about the total price that you're going to get for the home. Let's talk about renting first, because that's sort of, you know, the one that sort of doesn't fit in here. If we rent it, we're, we're recouping our profit, not quick, or we're recouping, we're getting a profit, not quickly, but it's actually going to take a long time. And it's going to be a, to, it's going to be a large total profit. If we rent this indefinitely, it's going to be some, you know, the, the profit is going to be through the roof and it's going to be over here. So renting, I want to put way over here just to show you, you know, to kind of have that in our minds. But let's talk about uh, selling for cash. If you sell for cash, if you find a buyer, you're going to get all your money right then and there. And you're selling for cash. They're going to have money or you know, they're not going to do the deal. You're not going to do the deal with them. So let's put the cash price uh, for fixing it up total right up here. A four, you made good money. You got all your money back quick. If we uh, do the basic repairs, we don't over improve the home. But we do fix up these, these issues if they need to be fixed and we address them and we fix what needs to be fixed. We fix what is broken and we correct that. Uh, number six, we're going to put down here. There's definitely a space between the two because you have people paying top dollar up here and then they know that they need to do more repairs so they're not going to give you as much. And then uh, number eight, unlivable, that could be, you know, darn well down at the bottom. You know, kind of anywhere, sort of a range of, yeah, right around there depending on, you know, the, the total, uh, the park, the area, the size of the home. If this is a one bedroom that's unlivable, it's going to be worth a lot less than a four bedroom that's double wide that's unlivable. That had the, the double wide four bedroom has way more potential. Somebody will pay more for it, even though, uh, you know, you're not going to get as much as if that double wide was fixed up totally. But again, you didn't put any money in over here. You put a lot of money in, in time over here. So is it worth it? It depends. Depends what you buy it for. So selling it for cash if possible, that's how the numbers work out. Bank financing, it takes maybe a month, a little bit over sometimes, or significantly over sometimes, to go through un un underwriting to be approved with a bank, with a lender for a mobile home, on land or in parks. So you're going to get your money pretty quick. When you find a buyer, when you actually find one and go through underwriting and they jump through every single hoop and you jump through every single hoop as well, you will make a good bit of money. Uh, relatively pretty close to what you're going to make for cash. So number seven with bank financing, we want to put it right next to each other. It's going to take a little longer because you have to wait for underwriting. Uh, same with the uh, same with uh, the basic fix on bank financing. You'll still get a good amount uh, because you're borrowing it through a bank or your buyer is borrowing it through a bank. They'll usually borrow a little bit more than paying it for cash. Uh, what we found, so put a nine kind of up there. And then bank financing, it's unlivable. Banks usually won't even lend on that, so we won't even put that on the, on the graph. Now, here's what's important. Seller, well, this relation is important, but uh, seller financing. When you're selling with seller financing with an interest rate and you're selling for 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30 years, 
for mobile homes in a park versus land, you are making a premium not only by selling uh, with seller held financing to an approved buyer who is low risk and has the ability to repay, you're also charging an interest rate, which amortized over 5, 10, 30 years is a substantial amount more profit assuming that the buyer pays you the minimum payment. So seller financing, number two, we're going to put way up here. And I think we agree that if we sell with owner financing, it's going to take a long time. I'm going to put that even further out to collect our total profit. Now, uh, number three, the basic fix is because we're selling with owner financing, there's, I was going to say millions, but it depends on your area. There's hundreds of thousands, there's millions, there's thousands of people that want to owner finance a mobile home and buy it with normal rent payments. It's like you could pay on a property and then eventually own it without going through a bank. Many people want to do that, but many people are not approved. So I will say that there's a lot of people that want to buy. Few will be approved. Few will have the ability to repay, but you have a huge pool of people and many of them are willing to do these repairs. Many of them are willing to do carpet. They're willing to do paint. Um, so you can sell a mobile home. Uh, number two, we put up here if it's totally fixed, which you put in a ton of money. But the basic fix, because you have a total, a, a large number of people, and this is important, the basic fix, there's such a big space here, we're really, the total price is going to be just under a total fix of a home. So if you have the option to, to sell or finance a mobile home, and you do a basic fix versus a total fix, here you're putting in a substantially amount more money with the total fix on number two. So it is usually advantageous and smart to do number three, a basic fix if you're selling with owner financing. Even if you're selling with cash, it's usually optimal to do a basic fix. Listen to the people that are walking through your home, and if people are mainly complaining about one or two issues, then you can upgrade those issues accordingly. But there's no sense in putting granite countertops in if you don't need to. And let's do the last one, number five, with seller financing. It's still unlivable, but you still should be able to sell it. Um, that's going to be somewhere right around this area. Again, unlivable, it sort of depends. It's going to take quicker to pay off because you're not going to sell it for the total price, so it's not going to take that long. But right around here, we'll put number five uh, for the total price, uh, which is still pretty good. Probably, yeah, right around here. Probably a range, something like that. Of what you of what you could get for for number five, um, so I hope that that made sense with regards to the way that the population relates to the repairs. The population relates to how you're going to sell, and also the repairs relate to how you're going to sell. Not only the, the the quickness and the predictability that you can get these homes filled, but then you know the total amount of time. Because if you don't have that much money to invest, well, you might have to sell homes for cash to raise more money to buy more homes to then owner finance or rent out. So understand this, I hope you understand this. It's just you know, been me talking at you for the last 20 minutes. So I hope that this made sense. If you have any questions or concerns, please comment them below. Email me personally at support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. There's a lot of nuances to this uh, kind of stuff. So please email me, because if you email me and ask me a question, I'll probably have like two dozen questions to ask you because there's a lot of if-then scenarios. There's a lot of circumstances that will change other circumstances in my answer, depending on what you're looking for and a lot of other stuff. So um, with that said, this video isn't over. I actually want to walk you through a different video that I'm walking through uh, with a local investor. Um, and we're kind of touring a, a property that she's looking at. Uh, so I want to walk you through that. We can talk a little bit more about repairs. And when you're watching it, thinking, you know, think about what we talked about here today, your desire exit strategy, the repairs that you can make, and you know what homes, what average homes need. I mean, there's a lot of homes around you. Some of them are in really bad shape. They weren't taken care of. And a lot of homes are taken care of. They're by normal people. So I hope that this all made sense. Thank you so much for watching again. Stick, stay tuned to watch that uh, walkthrough that we're gonna do right now. If you have any questions again, support at mobilehomeinvesting.net. Thank you again so much for watching. Bye-bye. Let's go take a walk through mobile home number one. This is an outside quick tour. Looks like the skirting is relatively new yeah, or pressure the washed. Okay. That looks new. relatively new. Good looking steps. What, what year is this one? 80 something? 87. Okay. This is fairly common. 
This needs to be removed and replaced just for aesthetics. Down here as well. Why wouldn't you just fill that in with something? Just leave it like that. Nice window tint. It's a new style. It's a, okay. it's called a floating tint. The more, <laughs> <laughs> and the park is fixing a leak back here you mentioned while we were uh, just and standing here <laughs> the neighbor came over which was a very handy man that uh, is mobile home experience that will buy <laughs> hopefully buy it and uh, or fix it All right, let's go inside this one this is nice I like these little tiny gutters that they put on the old homes. Yes. You don't have to add them, but it's, it's not nice because they thought of that. Now this is a three bedroom, two bath, uh, again, 1987. The carpets look good. Very salvageable on the carpets. Uh, underneath the windows, you can tell, actually that one looks, that one looks really nice. First one I went to looked really nice. This one, well, again, still looks nice, but the homeowner just put these I mean, they just kind of rig together anything that they really want. These uh, cabinets all look good, intact. The paint in the, on the walls looks good. Right here, that's just can be lifted up and this little piece can be removed. Or not little, it's actually huge, but that can just be removed. This is okay, not the best countertop, but the new owners can decide what they want to put in there. Right here, this is drywall actually. Drywall with this faux wood paneling. Uh, just drywall paper over it. I thought that was really weird. Quarter inch drywall. Let's go into the master bedroom. It's sort of common that the doors aren't here. This is a uh, obviously a curtain. Uh, tub. This is very standard. Can definitely stay as is. I want to walk around the entire perimeter of the home, which I already did, and push down all the walls, making sure that everything is secure. So there's a uh, shower over here and a stand-up tub. I mean, in 87, that was pretty cutting edge. Up here, you can see that, well, it's tough to see without a light, but there, right there is the uh, outside of the home, the aluminum roof. You have some insulation right here, the plastic barrier, and see, mobile homes are pretty, uh, pretty simple. All right, toilet. Uh, underneath the sink looks pretty good you got that spray foam that goes all the way underneath that's a pretty common fix to use uh, soft spot right here you have this uh, old particle board um, it looks like somebody just put a it's tough to see looks like somebody just put their foot or their heel right through the floor and that's just going to be uh, removed and replaced back here so we have a fix uh, 100 amp service coming into the home. So right here, this is a actually a half bath. This is a two bedroom, uh, two bath, two and a half bathroom home. There was probably a t uh, toilet here at one point, but that was removed. This whole floor is sort of wonky, and either you can fix it by going underneath the home and supporting it from underneath, because it's just kind of wonky. It's a little springy. It's not soft where it has to be replaced, but it's definitely springy. So we can either go underneath the home and support it from underneath, or we can completely, which wouldn't, we wouldn't have to touch any of this from the top. We just go underneath or which would make it look decent, or we can completely remove this. It's going to take a little bit more time and then completely remove all the floor in this room and then put down plywood uh, throughout the whole thing. And then that would look obviously the closest to being brand new. Uh, and this was the home, 87. Let's go back here real quick. A couple of holes in the drywall. Mobile home number two. All right, so this one's seen better days. The outside needs to be redone up here. This is definitely uh, too much wood rot for this T111 hardy board out here. Now, most of this is still good. Let's see the water heater. All right, so you can see a big hole right here. Just look down. The water heater doesn't look too bad. Uh, 
and that looks like it's mostly sturdy. Hopefully, I don't see it falling down anytime too soon. I'm, <laughs> I'm causing more damage. <laughs> too late. <laughs> okay, so outside here, until this door is a little off. Oh, wait, where is it? Right there. So already when we go inside, we know that their door is going to be a problem. I mean, this house is just, look at this. This is just a complete, you can see inside the home from the outside. I mean, that is just not very good. This home, if you were looking at this one, I mean, this is a free home. This is bulging out. All right, here's the mobile home tongue right in the front. Sometimes they put the VIN number either right there, sometimes pressed into the steel or over here. All right, here we are inside the home. That's where we were looking through. That central uh, AC unit, I can't imagine that it works, but uh, power is definitely not on in here. So we want to go to all the corners of the home, pretty much everywhere on the home, uh, and walk around the entire just perimeter of the home, as well as just everywhere in the home. Jump around, feel for soft spots, which is right there near the windows. That's when that's where water can obviously come into the home. Don't be afraid to pull back carpets. You know, if you're going to invest in a mobile home, uh, don't be afraid to get kind of handsy with it. Obviously, if you know somebody's living inside the home, don't be tearing down their walls. But, uh, and do be respectful, but if you're gonna be buying something, you have to know what you're buying. So turn on all the water, wait for the hot water heater to work. This bedroom's a good size. This bathroom is terrible. Uh, definitely, well, you can see a hole back there, but it's actually not that uh, soft at all. Can't see the outside. Obviously these walls, this is all drywall, which was redone because this home originally came with paneling. Here's drywall, it's thicker. Here's paneling, real thin, and then drywall. So this is a, there's no bedroom up front, just the kitchen. There was one bedroom. Here's ah bathroom. So this is a two bedroom, one bath. If this was a three bedroom, I'd be more excited. Uh, it is a two bedroom. Both of the bedrooms are good sizes, but it needs so much repairs. 125 amps coming into the home. That's pretty good. This bedroom is Wow, if I just came into the home and just went to this bedroom, this is not bad. Floors are sturdy So I'm just leaving this little park here where we checked out three uh, of the mobile homes. We're going right now to look at another one. And uh, I'm so proud of this investor. It's literally a one lane road, maybe uh, right back there. You know, maybe there's like 25 homes, maybe 30. And I'm so proud of this investor uh, who got started just a handful of months ago. She owns like most of the homes in there. She's like pointing this one, this one. We went and saw two of her tenants just in the middle of the day cooking uh, lunch. And they invited us for lunch, but we didn't stay. And just the awesome business, so just freaking cool.